Yo, what's up? Matt here at the American Edge and host at the Guild of Professional Sharpeners. And tonight in this video, I just want to share some ideas I have around why I think that adding a sharpening service to a small farm is a really good idea. And to start, I just want to share with you where this idea came to me. Like I think about sharpening a lot, but and the side hustle and like starting a business out of it. Uh, but this past winter, I went cross-country skiing at Harris Family Farm, which is a dairy farm in Maine. And I was just kind of, the whole thing kind of blew me away and like the, the way that they're using the, the land that they already have. Uh, like they bought some snow machines and they graded. Like it is, they put a lot of work into it, but the, the, the ski rental uh, room is above the, the market, right? So you kind of, you actually buy the ticket. Now I'm thinking about it a little more. You buy the ticket inside their little market. Like they have a, an enclosed building which serves as their, like where they sell their stuff. Um, so you have to go in there, right? And we're getting to some reasons why I think this is such a good idea, but it all kind of played out, like how they're using stuff they already have. It's a family farm. So I think I talked to the grandfather who bought it from his dad. And that's so, and then I think it's his granddaughter that's running the skiing. I might have that totally wrong, but that's sort of how I remember. I had a nice conversation with the old man. He was super cool. They had pictures up on the wall of like the way the, the how the farm is like, change I remember there was one about a fire back in some time anyway uh, but like so they tell their whole story right so and that's marketing um, but they're just using the, anyway I, I walked away from that event like dude what a great idea to add sharpening to a, a, a farm like it could be a small family farm they were pretty big like they definitely had uh, several generations involved and maybe some employees but in my own mind I'm thinking it starts at the scale of like a single family maybe a couple people work for them which I'll get to that and with some ideas too um, but anyway I just thought that this was a really good idea so I I just wanted to share that I think it's a good idea and here are some other reasons that I think it is I have some notes down here that I wrote to help me remember but the first one on my list is that it, you use existing relationships so as a small farm, like you could be running a local CSA or something like that, or maybe you're serving a farmer's market. But if you've, if you've gotten to the point where you're established, then you have existing clientele and they're eating, uh, which means they're using knives and which means that they, they probably need their knives sharpened. So the, the, it solves, at least it potentially solves quite a bit of initial marketing uh, because you have a clientele to already market to. The next thing I have is multiple touch points. I was thinking of this, like people run this in all sorts of different ways. You could try to do it like while you wait style sharpening or like the way it's done at most farmers markets. But the way I really like with this model would be the, like a drop off and pick up model, sort of like how I run the American Edge. And that way uh, you're getting customers back to your facility either once if they're just coming for knives or if they're dropping off knives, they got to come back. So, and then I really like the way that the family farm that I went to where they did that exchange in the building or like in the thing where they're selling the goods at their farm. I think that's brilliant. So those multiple touch points, right? Getting customers coming back to your place. Odds are good if you're, if they're paying for their knives at your counter, they're also going to make a purchase of whatever it is that you're, you're also selling. Space, the uh, space is an issue for a lot of people getting and going in this in that, um, but you don't really need a lot of space. Like I started on a single workbench in the corner of my basement. Uh, there's a lot of people in the guild who are kind of carving out a little section in their basement or a corner in their garage. And I was just thinking that for, any like s small to like any size up size farm space is probably less of an issue and you might have that space in uh one of your sheds and out building a basement in your house like this space is probably less of an issue meaning you could probably clear off a workbench and make that your sharpening space um age indiscriminate i i really like this one and that depending on what your vision is for your your family farm it could be something where the young people 
um, kind of take it, take that part on as well. Or it could be a thing where it just changes with time. And as people get older on the farm, like they might spend less time in the fields and, you know, like the sharpening would be a better fit or just anyone at all. Like that's the point is that anybody, any age, any person could learn the skill and apply it. Um, and I also have on here that could justify if you're in that, if you're in that zone where you have a lot of work and you, but not quite enough work to justify hiring somebody, it could be a nice way to bridge that gap. And, you know, if you, <laughs> for the time that they're on the farm, like they, they do the work you need them to do, but there's still like a little bit more to justify, like you could have them sharp. And that could be the thing that helps you justify bringing on more help if you're trying to grow your operation. Um, balanced seasonality. I like this too. And I don't, I'm not, I don't run a farm. So I uh, forgive me if I'm not getting this right. But my, my instinct is that most of them, uh, certainly around where I am in the Northeast, like the, the cash flow slows down in the winter. And I was thinking that sharpening could be a nice way to kind of smooth out that cash flow, especially if you were really good and found a way to kind of uh, increase your marketing and push more of more more sharpening into the into the off season. That way, you're you're bringing in some money in the off season, and you don't get swamped when you're really busy working in the in the fields. Um, something to massage and play with, but I like that idea. If if you're if you're looking for a way to generate a little bit of money in the off season, uh, this could be something to do there. Money flow and tax advantage. I see this working in two ways. The first way would be really like if your farm was doing really well, you had a banger year and you were sitting on profits and you weren't sure how to invest them. <clears throat> this could be a, a great opportunity to invest in another, in a way to branch out your business. The thing that I think is probably more likely is that you are in a position where you'd like to scale up the farm a little bit, maybe with a high tunnel or irrigation or something like that. Like you have projects that you want to install to like improve your farm, but you need a little bit of extra money uh, in order to get those things going. And I just feel like sharpening would be a great way to generate, you know, the hundreds to thousands of dollars uh, depending on where you are and things like that's either a little bit or a little bit or a lot of money, but it, in the scheme of things, it's really not that much, but it can be a deal breaker. If you just need a couple grand to f close the deal on this thing that gets you to the next step, right? So, uh, I see that as like pulling the profits out of sharpening to help you grow the farm. Um, that's, that's in my mind. I feel like that's probably more likely, but again, like every situation is different and I don't actually run a farm. So I'm kind of speculating. Um, profitable and low cost to get into profitability is again, a relative term, but I'll just say that I, I price my work at a dollar a minute. So 60 bucks an hour. And in my world, I consider that profitable and, um, you know, everybody be your own judge. It's good to know the value of your time. I'm going to get that a little bit more in a minute, but, um, I, yeah, so I consider the return to be respectable. And then the cost to get going, especially if you already have the space, is measured in hundreds of dollars, right? So uh, again, in terms of business, that's approximately nothing. Um, so anyway, that's it, like profitability and um, low cost to get into. Sharpen on any time frame. I like this because I suspect that when you, what, you've built your routine on your farm, you have certain times that you really need to do the things you want to do. Like if it were me, I'd be out there really early because I don't particularly like working in the heat of the sun. And then I might come in around like, you know, if I come in at noon for lunch or 11 or something like that to, to grab a bite to eat, I might do my sharpening when the sun's right up overhead and then go finish up some work a little later in the day. Uh, whatever, every, you know, the point is, you, or you could do it at night or you could like, if you do, the point is you can do it on whatever timeline you want, especially if you're working that model where people drop them off and then come back to pick them up. Uh, opportunity. And I believe what I mean here is that there's an abundance of opportunity and that of all of the people that I've worked with, I've never encountered a situation where I felt like there was not 
opportunity or that the market was saturated with sharpeners. So um, I just, I think that is what I meant with that bullet is just that there is an abundance of opportunity. I have trained my own eye to see it now. So I see it everywhere. I, there's more opportunity than I can uh, capitalize on at the moment uh, based on the way my life is. So I would just, I'm just trying to help other people see that. Uh, it's a hands-on skill, and I think that it's safe to assume that people who are operating either any size farm generally are comfortable working with their hands. So the skill set to uh, acquire the sharpening, you know, the, the, the process to acquire the scar sharpening skill set is probably going to be pretty fast. And then farmer's markets, uh, that came up on my mind too, like, if you're already doing a farmer's market and you have a little extra help or like you, you have somebody else who you'd like to, you know, kind of have them grow into their own thing, like you set up right next to each other and now like you're serving, you're selling your goods and serving your, your customers with sharpening in the same place at the same market. Uh, I think that would be a super cool uh, thing as well. So I'm sure there are more, and uh, but that is that exhausts the list that I came up uh, before turning the video on here, and that I think I came up with as I was, as I was driving home from the ski area last winter. I was just like my mind was just going like, oh man, this is sweet. All right, so the the before I close out, I just want to mention the Guild of Professional Sharpeners, and if this at all seems interesting to you, first thing I want you to do is uh, in the comments section. Uh, right, just type in the name of your farm and a link to your farm. I'd be super interested in seeing, uh, seeing that. Um, I, I have my own fascination with small farms and stuff like that, which is for a different story. But what I want to share with you, like the Guild of Professional Sharpeners, which is at guildofsharpeners.org, uh, uh, the like if this is something that seems fascinating to you, like the guild uh, is a good choice. And if I had to capture it in one way, it would be time. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you do value your time, uh, what you should do is uh, go to guildofsharpeners.org, look at like, what it costs to become a member for that first year, and then uh, just run the numbers based on the value of time or how many hours would I need to save you, or we as a community, uh, need to save you in order to justify that expense. And I presume that it would not be a lot. And actually, if you look at it that way, it would actually be like really not a lot at all, uh, especially if you broke it out over the course of an entire year. And then inside the guild, there is some structured content like courses, <clears throat> uh, specifically on learning the skill of sharpening and then also on the business aspect of turning that skill into a business. Uh, I think that's I think that's, you know, that justifies the expense in and of itself. I do believe that it's that good. Uh, but with the Guild, what we also offer is a community of people doing it. You have direct access to me. You can get me on the phone. Like if you're tooling up, if you're, I was just on the phone with Ken today. He's looking at getting into uh, scissors, shears, and clippers. And he just needs a little bit of clarity. He's done a lot of research, but he needs some clarity around uh, some ideas and to solidify what he was thinking, right? Just bouncing these ideas off somebody and be like, yo, is this, am I, re am I doing this right? Am I, am I, am I researching this right? And yeah. Like we'll get on the phone and we'll talk that out. Um, and that's, and then you got a bunch of other people also offering valuable, positive feedback as well, so that you don't have to just, you know, take my word for anything. Like everybody finds their own way to do things. So you get a, a group, group feedback, right? So I was thinking about that with, with farming too. And I, I, I try to grow a bunch of food. And I was, I remember like, uh, the first time the cabbage moth ate all of my kale and I was like, what the heck? Right. So I, I wish I had that community be like, yo, what is, what is happening to my kale and what do I do about it? Or like, uh, my, my peas didn't germinate well. And I was like, it'd be nice to have that community. Like, yo, I was thinking like how much I learned from my dad uh, starting plants. And right now I have a neighbor up the road, Steve, who I, I shoot him, you know, like, yo, when do I plant the garlic, you know? Uh, or like, where do, where do you get potatoes? Because of where I was getting, like, it's just like having, having people to ask all these questions uh, is super valuable. And I feel like that's what we're providing with the guild. So if you're interested, check it out, guildofsharpeners.org. I will leave a link in the description. Make sure you go into the comments and uh, leave the name of your farm and a link so I can uh, check that out. Thanks so much. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to me. I will leave my contact info uh, in the description as well. And uh, 
Thanks for considering it.